Hey guys, welcome to part two of presenting a patient series. This is the final presentation of the series and this is aimed at health and rehab students. This is just a reminder that this is a very broad summary and you can add on to it. The more you do it, the more you'll see ways that work for you. And this is just a way for you to have a foundation and maybe use it as a reminder at times. And because we're focusing on different disciplines today, it's going to be structured a little different to the last one. And so we won't have patient examples. Uh, let's get right into it. We're going to start with speech and language pathology. So the subheadings we're going to focus on are case history, assessment report, and the management plan. So now we will start with case history. It is important here to gather all the information that will give you clues as to what happened to the patient and what problem the patient is facing. And this will guide the direction that you will be heading with your assessment. And so you will get the basics such as the patient name and age, and it is important to get um, the history of their pregnancy and birth, family history, education history, medical history, and uh, again, as I repeated before, developmental history. And before you can resume with your assessment, it is important to make sure that a hearing assessment has been done of both ears and this is usually done by audiology but speech and language pathologists can also perform um, a hearing test. So with your assessment you want to find out what problem your patient is facing and so it is important to have a thorough assessment and make sure that you get every aspect of what you think might be happening assist so that you can determine a way forward and a management plan. So we're going to start with oral mechanism assessment, which is a way to kind of rule out or include any mechanical aspect and uh, any structural factors as well. Then you can move to speech production, which is where you will be looking at the phonological process. And also, this is where you might identify any speech errors. Then there's receptive and expressive language. And here you need to identify what specifically is the problem with the receptive language and the expressive language. But also remember, um, especially with expressive language, that the language barrier may be a component to this. And so if you're able to do this assessment with the patient's um, mother tongue, then you can do that. And so you're just trying to determine whether they can express themselves and speak. So basically assessment, you'll be summing up all the problems that you have found after that thorough assessment that you've done. Then once you've done your assessment, you can move on to the management. And here we have put it under the heading continued care because you have two subheadings there. So with your management, you have your long-term goals and your short-term goals. Your long-term goals are your broader end goals. So basically you identified things in your assessment and your long-term goals, that is what you want to ultimately correct or improve. And your short-term goals are more specific and are derived from your long-term goals. So it's more of like the specific aspect of um, maybe speech production that you have identified or me mechanical issues that you have identified. And so you have specific uh, goals and, and specific aspects that you focus on. So with the short-term goals as well, um, you need to have literature supporting the specific aspects that you've chosen and why it will work for your patient. With the session plan, you go more into details, into like your daily workings. So the aims of the sessions you'll be having with your patient, the activities that you'll be doing, and then 
you'll also be continuously revising the problem that you found on assessment. So after you've done your sessions, you'll be revising it and revising how the planned management is working and whether it's um, suitable for your patient, if it's working for your patient and how it will be helping their recovery. This is also a way you would rationalize with literature on how this specific plan you have made and these activities you've made will be helping your patient. Then you would also mention what equipment you may be using in your sessions and also have a sort of success criteria to measure whether or not your intervention is working and if it is helping the patient progress well or if they're not uh, getting better at all and if you need to reassess and come up with a new plan. Okay, that's it for our short and quick summary for speech and language pathology. And now we're going to move straight into physiotherapy. So now we'll be talking about the patient summary, the history, subjective and objective examination, the plan and investigations that may have been done. Okay, with the patient summary, you will give the name, the age, and the sex of the patient, the basic details of the patient. Then the date of admission and the reason they were admitted, as well as the condition the patient may have or may have had, and any procedures that were done, if any were done, such as surgeries or any such thing, what medication they're on or medication that they have been given, and their vitals on admission, as you will use this as a reference in future trends. And then with history, you will give just the general history of the patient, the well-being of the patient, and also um, anything that may be affecting how you'll be treating your patient. So their past and current medical history, their past surgeries, any previous medication they may have used, and also their social history. Once you have your history, you can now go into examination because now you have an idea of maybe what you're looking for or what direction you're going to go with your examination, what system you're working on, um, what body part you're working on. And so then you start with your local observations. So your local observations is you just looking at just the patient's general um, well-being in terms of maybe the surgery that they had, do they have swelling, do they have scars, you check the wounds, check if the wounds are infected, if they heal, you check if they're healing well, you also check their posture, their respiratory rate, if what you'll be working on is the respiratory system. Then you go um, more into detail. Do they have a cough? Is it productive? Is it unproductive? What color is the sputum? Um, with the observations, you obviously focus on what um, you're concerned with or what part uh, you'll be focusing on or going with in terms of uh, your management. Then you have general observations. So. Are they attached to anything? Do they have oxygen or anything like that? Any monitors? Uh, are they mobile? Do they have a wheelchair next to them? Do they have crutches with them? And their general demeanor, are they um, up and about? Are they down and just not um, responding and not being a part of activities? And then their responsiveness, are they uh, wakeful or are they just tucked away and not responding to you? And then we move on to the objective examination. Here you just report the full physical exam of the patient, um, auscultation, palpation, percussion, and then you report on a more focused exam on the specific system that is going to be the focus for your rehab. Um, and also the main things that you test for, uh, the observations that you do, uh, you check the active and passive range of motion, muscle, muscle strength testing and such things. So then that will be on your focused exam. 
And remember, this is very specific to the system that you will be working on with your rehab. So it's different for the systems that you're working on, and it depends on what has been affected, muscles, neurological, uh, then you just report that back, you examine that, and this will also be guiding your plan and how you'll be treating your patient. So your plan, once you've done everything, gotten your history, your examination, you know what's happening with the patient, you see what rehab they need, then the plan is basically what type of treatment you're going to conduct. Are you going to do chest physio? Are you going to try and mobilize the patient? Again, this is very specific to what you've encountered. So all the patients you meet will be different. It depends on what you need to be working on. If you're mobilizing them, it depends on that. If it's um, trying to mobilize an arm, a leg, it's dependent on what you're working on and it's, pa it's patient specific. So your plan has to be um, adjusted to your patient. Then you'll also... As then as part of your management, you'll have to assess their response to treatment and if they are ready to commence with treatment. So before you treat them, you have to see if they're ready to start with treatment, like if they've had surgery, are they ready to start moving yet? And then as you carry on and you start with their plan and the rehab, then you have to also start assessing their response to the treatment and report on it too. So you should also mention the investigations done um, that will help you with your plan or to see whether you can start and also as a means of follow-up as you continue rehab. So you'll do bloods that may affect or prevent you from mobilizing and x-rays to see what type of injury they've had um, and maybe what type of repair they've had and whether or not it's possible for them to mobilize. And any other relevant inves investigations that you've done, then you'd also report those back. Um, and also kind of like why you've done them or what they'll affect once they're back. Next, we will look at occupational therapy. So we're going to be looking at naming and framing when presenting a patient in occupational therapy. For naming, we want to know more about the patient. We want to know the key background information, the assessment methods that you used and the findings, the goals that you've set for the session, and important contextual factors and resources. For framing, we basically want you to explain what intervention you chose and why you chose it specifically for this client using a whole lot of occupational therapy, knowledge, modules, principles, and theories. For key background information, we want to know who this person is, their age, gender, grade, occupation. We want to know what conditions they have. Have they had any previous surgeries or hospital admissions? We want to know more about their family dynamics, their interests, and any hobbies that they have. We want to know a bit more about the context, like development, any disabilities, roles, we want to know about the environment that they find themselves in, physical environment, social and cultural environment. And then we also want to know the current context that you're going to be addressing. So is it at home? Is it at work? Is it at school? Then we want to look at tasks. So these are things that are expected of them because of their roles and also activities that they would like to engage in. For assessment methods and findings, you basically want to use an approach that's going to help you find out what the main source of the problem is. So you need to identify what are the tasks that the person is able to do, and then what are the barriers that are preventing them from doing each task in each environment. Then you want to validate your assessments and make a summary, interpret what influences their ability to either complete or the inability to complete those tasks in the different environments. 
you want to make sure that you assess the person's ability to do tasks. For example, a patient in a wheelchair living in a small flat on the second floor, you want to ask them, are you still able to go shopping, for example? If they are, ask them how they've adjusted their life and their lifestyle in order to complete these tasks. And then think about what is standing in the way between how they're currently doing it and how they would like to do it. Is it the environmental factors like the flight of stairs, for example, or is it something, an issue that lies within the person that's a barrier essentially to them completing their tasks? So now that you've got a good understanding of what the main source of all their problems is, you can now create goals in order to counteract these problems or adjust the environment and help the person to now complete their tasks or learn new ways of completing their tasks. You can make long-term goals and then you can also make short-term goals. Just remember that the short-term goals are basically stepping stones in order to reach your long-term goals. Lastly, you want to show the relevance of your session with them and also explain how you plan on meeting their main goal and their long-term goals using your occupational therapy principles and also explaining how you'll either upgrade or downgrade the activity in the treatment sessions and explaining precautions that need to be taken into consideration. Lastly, let's look at audiology. When presenting a patient, you want to do the case history, assessment, referral, and management. With case history, we want to know, again, who is this patient? We want to know the name, age, the symptoms that they presented with, and the duration of those symptoms. Do they have any prior head or ear injuries? Do they have family history that you need to know? Any pre-existing medical conditions? Are they taking any medication? And do they have any daily exposure to loud noises, which could impact their hearing? Next, you want to actually assess the patient's hearing. You can use these four methods in order to do so. From your assessment, you should now be able to know whether your patient needs to be referred or not. These are some of the places or some of the things that they may need to be referred for. This includes electrophysiological tests, vestibular testing, vestibular rehabilitation, oral rehabilitation, tinnitus management. Lastly, the management of your audiology patients includes hearing aid fittings, cochlear implants, and central auditory processing disorder management. Okay, so with the above mentioned, um, the aim of you doing all of this and what you should also be presenting is to diagnose and manage any hearing balance and related disorders uh, so that you're able to manage your patient. Um, via therapy and, or maybe assistive devices and uh, as part of all of this you would have had to do some tests to diagnose your patient and you'd also mention that as well so you would diagnose based of behavioral hearing tests electrophysiologic tests tympanometry or acoustic reflexes just to mention a few and so you would mention your findings uh, from these tests and how, uh, what diagnosis you may have come to and also you'd also test for sensitivity uh, severity and what type of hearing loss your patient may have uh, also which site the lesion is. This will guide you towards the type of management you will be giving your patient. So you would do the relevant bedside tests or refer for any of the mentioned 
uh, tests above then when you are sure what type of hearing loss it is then you know what type of management you have for your patient and where to refer them and you'd also mention that as well uh, when you're presenting your patient as a whole okay so that's it just remember that with with everything that we have mentioned above um, with all the disciplines, it may take days or weeks for you to get from your starting point, the summary, down to the plan. And so you'll present accordingly. You'll present up to what you have gotten to in the session that you've had. So if you've only just gotten to maybe a history and assessment for your patient, then that's what you present. And then once you've seen the patient more, you've made a plan for them, then you start presenting more, more of the things that you've done. Then you start presenting things like whether the treatment is happening. So it's a progressive event. And yeah, thank you guys for checking out our video. We hope it was helpful. Tune into our future workshops.